It's over. <laughs> Give yourself up. It's been a long time. You're a hard man to find. I intend to keep it that way. Practicing. Oh. That's most invigorating. This is your last chance to stay alive. Surname? Holmes. With an L. Christian name? Sherlock. <laughs> Occupation? Detective? You're one of us. A private detective. Is that supposed to impress me? He was good. But you won. He's dead. Single shot through the heart. <laughs> Do Victoria. You know, the detecting, deducing thing. Yes, Sherlock. What can you say about me? He's dead. I thought perhaps you must have sat up in the morgue and told Mr. Holmes who killed him. <coughs> if you'll permit me to explain, the attack took place on the street. The victim was jabbed in the leg with a thick needle. A powerful opium-based narcotic was then injected into his bloodstream, rendering him confused and disorientated. He was then dragged into an alleyway where his throat was ripped apart and his valuables removed. Have I missed anything out, Doctor? This is all in my report. Naturally. Now, given the location of the needle wound, here, in the calf, it seems unlikely that the killer used a conventional syringe. But that would have been both conspicuous and inconvenient. No, it's far more likely that the needle was disguised in, say, a walking stick. The fact that the victim was jabbed in the leg, rather than the neck, suggests it's the work of someone of lower than average height. Coupled with this, combining the angle of entry of the hypodermic needle can lead to only one conclusion. The killer's height was between five feet and five feet two inches. The puncture wound. That was remarkably precise, wouldn't you say, Doctor? It could have been luck. Yes, but combine that fact with the precision of the neck wound and the fact that the victim's teeth were extracted in such a professional manner and we have to assume we're dealing with someone with some kind of medical training. Although this medic isn't in practice anymore, as you so pertinently pointed out. Now, our most important clue was also identified by Dr. Watson. He was able to determine that the victim's throats were cut using a weapon with a hooked blade. On each of the victims, the blade consistently entered the throat on the right side and exited on the left. Similar wounds made while the body was being manhandled suggest that the blade was actually attached to the attacker's body. Conclusion? The killer had a metal hook in place of his left hand. But there must be other possibilities. No, there are none as likely. All of this allows us to narrow down our list of possible suspects. We're looking for an unusually short, one-armed man with medical training. Well, who is this crookshank? A doctor? A dentist? Performs illegal abortions from his rooms in Soho. Beyond that, he's five feet tall, served as a medic with the King's Own Borderers, dishonorably discharged for incompetence and a morphine addiction which he formed soon after losing his left hand in the Second Afghan War. Of course, I could be mistaken, but I'd say it's worth bringing him in for questioning. Unless you'd rather wait for another victim.
absent. Professor Moriarty. At your service. <laughs> Do you see what I see? A mess? A business plan. It's charged. A child. Children. Oh, yes, of course, I'm sorry. At least two children. One is over five years old, the other less than two months. His wife died giving birth to that child. <laughs> oh, this is too much. Watson, look at the way he holds himself and the color of his skin. Clearly, he's a soldier. He's more than a private and has recently been in India. He's still wearing his ammunition boots, which means he's only just left the services. He doesn't walk like a cavalryman. But he obviously wore his hat on one side. You can see the lighter skin on the left half of his face. He's too stocky to have been a sapper, which leaves us with the artillery. He's in mourning for someone close. The fact that he's doing his own shopping suggests it's his wife. He's been buying gifts for children, one of reading age, the other an infant. This is most impressive. So I understand from Dr. Watson here that you believe that Moriarty is still alive. Sorry, Holmes. It, it was the only way I could think of to get you back to work. Please, you did the right thing, Doctor. Oh. <laughs> Notice that people send the strangest gifts during a convalescence. From my Aunt Agatha. Quite mad. And convinced that the cure for any ill is to wrap up warm. <laughs> uh, oh, which reminds me. I have something here that I've been meaning to give you for days. Thank you, Watson. You'll be doubly grateful when they make cigarettes illegal. Here, put the hat on. And look this way. <laughs> <laughs> 